What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video we're going to be talking all about venomous snakes and the different types of fangs they may possess. So if you're interested in seeing more topics like this, hit the like button or let me know in the comments below. And real quick before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. So starting with a little terminology, an aglyphus snake or aglyphus snake is a snake that doesn't have any fangs. We're not gonna be talking about them today. They're not venomous, maybe in another video. Also, sorry if I butcher any of these names. I'll say right now I am not the best at pronouncing a lot of these names, but I will try my best and put them on the screen. So beginning with front fang snakes, because I think they are the ones that are more commonly known or thought about when you think of a venomous snake. You imagine a snake with the big fangs in the front of its mouth. There are two different types of front fang snakes split up into different families of snakes. So if you know a little bit about the different families of snakes, this will make a little more sense how they categorize them. Um, one of the ways they do categorize them is by the different types of fangs they have. So the first type of fang we're gonna go over is a solenoglyphous fang. So solenoglyphous fangs are the type of fangs that the Viperidae family possesses. So a few different snakes that belong in the Viperidae family are all types of vipers, obviously, puff adders, and different types of rattlesnakes, along with many more different types that you can look into if you're curious. So solenoglyphous fangs are known for their ability to move. Those are, if you've ever seen a feeding video where it's shown the snake almost walking the prey into its mouth using its fangs, those will be solenoglyphous snakes. So this type of fang is often being described as similar to a hypodermic needle. They are very long and tubular, able to go very deep into the skin and inject very quickly lots of venom into their prey. Snakes of the Viperidae family are also able to shed these fangs every few months to keep them fresh for when they need them. So one of my favorite snakes in this family is the Gaboon Viper. So this snake has the longest fangs out of any venomous snake at upwards of two inches long. That's terrifying. <laughs> I would not want to get bit by him. So he has fangs up to two inches long and is able to inject the most fluid ounces of venom into a prey item at once. So very interesting and something people don't realize about venomous snakes in general is they are able to deliver what is called a dry bite. So they can control their venom glands in their mouth if they wanted to bite something, say for defense and not necessarily to kill the item that they can bite without injecting any venom if they wish. But these fangs are very good for injecting lots of venom very quickly if it is a prey item they are trying to bite. Now these fangs tend to be the larger of the two types of front fangs. So the next type of fangs are the proterogliphus fangs. Ta-da! So the Elapidae family includes cobras, black mamba, coral snakes, and many more. If you want to look into that, you can look up the Elapid family. But these snakes have fixed fangs, which don't move as well. There are some snakes in this family who are able to partially move them, but it is not common for this type of fang. Now these fangs tend to be shorter than the Solenoglyphus fangs, and they can have more than one on each side of their mouth. So they are able to bite into prey and hold onto it longer while injecting more venom over a period of time, as opposed to the Solenoglyphus ones, where they will bite in and be able to inject super quickly because they have those needle-like fangs. There are some types of snakes that have been able to evolve to have more of a high pressure response with their venom glands, and they are able to shoot venom very far distances. <laughs> Sorry, I have one of those plastic tunnels for my ferrets and they're both climbing through it now and I'm not gonna try to dig them out. So sorry if you can hear that. But there are some types of snakes who've been able to evolve to be able to have high pressure reaction in their venom glands, causing the venom to shoot out at far distances like spitting cobras. So the spitting cobra can shoot its venom up to two meters away, which is over six and a half feet. Think about that for a minute. Kind of terrifying but kind of really cool. But fortunately, that is not the norm for snakes in this family. So that covers the types of front fang snakes. Now we will talk about the difference between them and rear fang snakes. So epithoglyphous snakes, often referred to as your rear fang snakes, are gonna be your snakes in the colubrid family. So colubrids include corn snakes, milk snakes, king snakes, a lot of your common household snakes, but this family does include quite a few venomous species. 
So a few super popular rear fang venomous snakes include the western hognose and the mendrug snake, which is also becoming very popular in the pet trade. So the main difference between these types of fangs and any of the front fang snakes is they don't inject venom. What they have is a hollow groove or sulcus on the side of the tooth that is used to push in kind of their toxic saliva. Although all venom is a type of toxic saliva, they're able to kind of chew the venom more into your skin. Many of these snakes, their venom is relatively harmless to humans and is really meant for smaller prey items such as toads and lizards and small rodents. So they, it's easier for them to go and chew it into a small prey item which would do the job. So even though a lot of these snakes possess a more mild venom than a front fang snake, there are some that can still be very deadly, such as the boom slang, which is a very deadly snake, despite the fact that it has rear fangs. So it's also important to remember that just because something is venomous doesn't mean it is as harmful as one may think. So even bees and ants are venomous and most people don't think about it like that. Many people can get stung by a bee and be just fine and just have some swelling and irritation, but there are of course the people who will have an allergic reaction and it could be very serious. So it's the same thing with other rear fang venomous snakes, just because one person might get bit by a western hognose and have a very minimal reaction, someone else could have a stronger reaction, so it is something to always think about when keeping these snakes. But overall, a lot of rear fang snakes have become a lot more popular in the pet trade these days. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and were able to learn a thing or two about the different types of venomous snakes. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave a comment below what your favorite type of venomous snake is. Mine personally is the Gaboon Viper, one of my all-time favorites. Um, I would probably never own one, but I can always enjoy them from a distance. <laughs> so let me know down below what your favorite type of venomous snake is and I will see you next time.